multiple counties. I know Muhlenberg, I know Hopkins um, here, uh, certainly Graves, we believe in Marshall. Um, it's tough, but also your folks have done uh, incredible uh, work uh, on top of it since the very beginning. And I'm really proud of the response here in Warren County. Mayor. Thank you, Governor. Bowling Green citizens, uh, we're taking a knee at this moment. We are an emergency state and we appreciate what the governor and what the president have, has already declared for us. Um, our community wants to help. And the best way to help is just like the governor stated, but there's another way. Um, I talked to our local Red Cross. Mm -hmm. and they are set up right now at South Warren High School. Uh, many, many people have already given in-kind donations to the Red Cross at South Central High School. Um, what they've told me is they appreciate it, but they've asked to hold off on in-kind donations. What we need right now is because that is a place where our personnel, our people are going for shelter tonight. They already have about 15 personnel that are there this evening. We know that more are coming. And so they need to focus their energy towards taking care of those that need immediate shelter. So if you need immediate shelter, uh, please contact through our 911 and ask for assistance in getting to South Warren if you need to get there because it is getting colder, light is about to give up on us, and we need people to be able to get into a shelter over their head tonight. If you want to help with in-kind donations or you want to help with monetary donations, they've asked that all citizens do not call the 1-800. The 1-800 Red Cross, 1-800 Red Cross is for those that need immediate shelter and immediate help. What they've asked the citizens in our community to do at this moment is to go to redcross.org. Redcross.org is for people to give in-kind donations or monetary donations, and these donations will go to the Warren County chapter, which I want to get an update to make sure exactly what that is, what's well, coming. But you can designate if in the local community to go to the Warren County. It's right here. Warren County Regional, uh, Warren County Regional Centers. It's not exactly there, but I apologize. I'll get that information to you. But we want you local community because you can go donate to the entire state of Kentucky. Our community members that want to donate locally to the families that are in need here. Again, we are amongst heroes. Since early this morning, since one o'clock, our emergency responders have been out in our community from a major fire that was at the uh, Corvette assembly plant, and they were taking care of that during the storm. Uh, Chief Brooks and his team are out there right now doing search and recovery. So we need to continue search and recovery while we have these critical daylight hours left to be able to take care of our community. So we need you to stay off the roads unless it's absolutely an emergency for you. So last, our heroes are amongst us. I am proud of our team. I'm proud of Bowling Green. I'm proud of Warren County. I'm proud of our emergency central responders. I'm proud of the team that's come together. There is no ego in this room today when it comes to Bowling Green and Team Kentucky. So thank you all. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. God bless and pray for our community. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, next, we're going to hear from General Hal Lamberton. Um, our National Guard you know, answers the call in, in this last couple of years in so many ways, from flooding to ice storms to the pandemic, and they are out today uh, serving so many missions. General? Thank you, Governor. Well, for everybody's awareness, and as the Governor had just uh, alluded to, we currently have guardsmen who are stood up and active in multiple sites across the, the Commonwealth at this junction. Most commonly what some of our folks are doing, we're engaged with search and rescue, search and recovery missions, that this is even inclusive of a, a specially canine dog that we've got available to us. In some other communities, it's some simple things, although at a, a, a catastrophic level of debris removal, as you all are probably aware of in a number of communities where they've lost communication, we've got guardsmen who are out 
doing door knocks and checking up on folks because there's no other communication with some of these people and simply the uh, the local county or city authorities don't know the status of some of these folks at this junction. But we're working with our law enforcement partners, our fire department partners, our emergency management partners, really in each setting. And as, as each of you all know as well or better than I, it is a, a partnership that we're engaged with because it's a joint effort where we all come together to respond to the community's need. And this is the, the governor's kind of uh, alluded to, this is sure as heck not a static situation, but a dynamic one. It's continuing to evolve. We're getting better assessment on the ground for multiple communities where we're currently engaged. And my expectation is that it will continue to evolve even further as we learn more about the, the situation in different communities, as we get better communication, and as we're able to work again with the, the multiple partnerships that we've got in the response nature. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so today on day one of, uh, of this disaster response, um, you know, we've, we've been in, in three cities. We're here in Bowling Green on, on day one. The governor, the adjutant general of the National Guard, and then also Michael Dossett. He is the head of all emergency management uh, here in the Commonwealth. Um, you've seen him probably a couple times helping us with both COVID and flooding. Uh, you want to get us the latest and also what that federal emergency declaration uh, means. Thank you, Governor. And as the governor indicated, uh, being granted an emergency declaration in a single day uh, is unheard of, quite frankly, across the nation. Uh, our hearts go out to all the families who have lost loved ones. Um, a, a, a solemn event, obviously, during a catastrophic uh, event of this size. Uh, history will tell us that uh, 1975 was one of the most deadly uh, tornado outbreaks. Um, and we we're set to surpass that. And in 1925, possibly the longest track to date. But we're not about breaking records uh, for the event. We're about breaking records for response. And that's what we're here to do with FEMA support. So in communication with FEMA today, being granted the uh, disaster declaration, uh, we have what's called category B, and that is for emergency uh, emergency measures. It's everything that you're spending your money for uh, in order to bring your uh, make your citizens whole again, to get the grid back up, and to repair uh, homes and infrastructure. Uh, so we'll get an expedited reimbursement on those type of costs. We also have on the ground FEMA USAR team, search and rescue. Uh, they're on the highway headed here. It'll be a large presence. Uh, we have incident support teams, which will manage the USAR across the state. We also have um, a variety of large generators, as you heard. Some in this generator pack uh, can power whole hospitals. Uh, so they're on the way. Uh, we'll be here with you uh, today, uh, during the weeks and the months, and quite frankly, during the years that it takes to recover from this event. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we also have um, uh, your state senator, uh, state representative um, here today that have been in close contact with the administration uh, since last night. So, Senator, you want to start us? Well, first of all, this is a all hands on deck event. Um, thanks to our first responders, all of them that have been probably a couple of days without sleep. Uh, you're greatly appreciated. Thanks to the National Guard. Uh, for coming out to assist because I know that they're really tired but they've done a fantastic job and appreciate them so much I can tell you this that in my lifetime here in Bowling Green I've never seen this type of devastation I'm driving around looking at the neighborhoods um, early this morning I, I just couldn't fathom couldn't believe what I saw but how the, everyone has responded, the state, where we're coming together. And I know one of the things, Governor, that uh, was just communicated to me from your administration that the park systems are going to open up their rooms for those that are displaced for them to be able to have a place uh, to stay, to live until 
something else can come available. And so we appreciate that, appreciate Russ Meyer uh, offering that up to us, but we stand ready as a legislature, as a Senate, I know uh, as a house to work with the governor to make sure that we provide what is needed going forward from the state level. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Representative Mentor. Thank you, Governor. Um, thank you, Senator Wilson. Thank you for being here today, Governor, and Senator Wilson and I, on behalf of the Kentucky Senate and House, stand united, ready to do what needs to be done to make Kentucky whole again. I've never seen anything in, like this in my lifetime. I'm certain that is what everybody in this room would say. Never happened. Never happened. And I am so proud of the amazing, courageous work that our first responders have done here in Bowling Green and Warren County. Thank you to our Sheriff's Department, Bowling Green Police, Bowling Green, Warren County, firefighters, volunteer firefighters, the folks at the hospitals who are working with generators until seven in the morning. Thank you for getting the power back on. Grateful to yeah. BGMU and uh, Warren Rural Electric who have worked through the night to get many of us power back and certainly again the hospital it led me to have a big sigh of relief. Our promise to you and the promise that is made today with the governor, General Lamberton, Director Dossett is that we see and hear the cries of every Kentuckian who is in need. We'll update you through social media channels on how you can get the resources you need and we will all work together to make sure that we build our communities back and we heal what has happened here today. We stand united. I'm proud to stand with all of you today to help Bowling Green, Warren County, and all of Kentucky in this hour of great need. Thank you. In just a second, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Judge Buchanan, who we've been communicating all day long, uh, both with the office and as I've been um, on the road. And, and I, I appreciate the job that he and everybody else have done, but uh, Chief, Sheriff, Chief, any anything additional? One answer. Okay. But you deserve that respect if, uh, all right, good. Judge, and let me just say, um, whether it's working with you in COVID or, or here, thank you for that relationship. Uh, we've been hit hard, harder than we ever have, harder than anybody ever has, uh, but we'll also get back up. That's what we do as Kentuckians. We are resilient, strong people, and I know that's exactly what you're gonna do in Warren County. Thank you very much, Governor. Um, I'm gonna be very brief because I need to turn this over to a gentleman named John Gordon, who's the chief meteorologist from Louisville. He is here to explain what's happened here and kind of give us a, an idea of how this has happened. But I want to tell you, we've had, I had Mark Iverson said that they had about 11,800 homes out this morning at, at BGMU and I talked with, uh, Dwayne McDonald, he said they have about 16,000 homes. It's 28,000 people, many of whom, most of whom, won't have any electricity tonight. So just keep all those people in mind. Keep them in your prayers. We appreciate it. I appreciate the working relationship I have with all of you all, city, county, state, the governor's office. I, I really, no one can do this all by themselves. You have to have a team effort from everyone but if you would please remember that uh, that a lot of people are a lot less uh, lucky than we are there there are people who are absolutely devastated tonight keep those keep all those people in your prayers and all their families and for for now I'm going to turn this over to John Gordon who's a who, who's a lot smarter than I am not really <laughs> Well, the worst case scenario happened. Warm air in the cold season, middle of the night. This sickens me to see what has happened. Look at the pictures on your screens. Homes totally impaled, two by fours through cars. 18 wheelers thrown 30 feet moved in the northwesterly direction. That takes a lot of force. We have an EF3 tornado in the Bowling Green area. 
155 mile per hour winds, at least. We're gonna be back tomorrow for days, Governor. Days we'll be surveying. Governor mentioned about four tornadoes. I think there's more. This thing came out of Tennessee into Logan County, hit Warren County, went into Edmondson County and Hart County. As soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna run up I-65. Don't pull me over. I'll be going up to Horse Cave before uh, dusk. There are lots of tornadoes. I think there was a touchdown in Monroe County, Greene County, Taylor County, Spencer County, Ohio County. This sickens me. So folks, I hate this. Uh, the governor mentioned some of the main events. I think of West Liberty when I see this. Yes. Sirensville. Yes, except it kept going. That's right. That's right. This was long, long, long trackers. So in the cool season, warm air, never good. We had good warnings. One death is too many. We lost a lot of Kentuckians. It sickens me. So folks will be out for days and days. Help these first responders. Emergency management, our number one partner, Mike Dossett over there. So I'm off to Horse Cave. Take care. God bless everyone. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Take Appreciate care. it. Also want to remind everyone, thank you very much, John. You. Uh, I want to remind everyone, besides the 16 or 28,000 people who won't have electricity tonight, there, I was just told by our emergency management that we have over 500 homes destroyed in Warren County. Right? Thank you. Thank you. And over a hundred businesses that are destroyed in Warren County. That, that's that's something that we really need to uh, take it to the Lord in prayer tonight about how lucky most of us are, because there are an awful lot of people who aren't going to bed in their own beds tonight. But thank you, Governor, for being here, and yes. thank you for your help and support as always. Wonderful. God bless you all. We'll we'll open it up. We'll open it up for questions. For the people that are affected by this, who aren't going to be sleeping in their own beds, what do you say to them generally, and how can they access these things when power's out in some places and getting connection to the internet or being able to find that out? How are those people going to find a safe place to sleep tonight? Well, first, what we'd say is we're with you. This is one commonwealth that loves each and every one of these families that is impacted and stands ready to help. Just look around. We've got volunteers that are here answering the phone lines, ready to help each and every one of those individuals. We have the Red Cross, um, as we were told, preparing uh, shelter for those who, who need it. Um, so there is um, a place uh, for everyone to be warm tonight. We just need to make sure they call in, uh, get that information, or go to the Red Cross. Uh, which is also providing uh, that information. And your general reflection on today, especially with how it hit your hometown? It's really hard and uh, really painful. I spent eight hours wondering if one of my cousins was still alive after hearing a number of people initially lost in, uh, in Dawson Springs. I got to see her about an hour and a half ago, and um, I'd like to say I was relieved, but then I look at blocks and blocks and blocks, about a third of the town just uh, decimated. I mean, this isn't supposed to happen. Um, and, and it's unlike anything that any of us have ever seen, the sheer devastation. I mean, seeing a, a factory with cars where the roof used to be, except probably five feet lower than it. Uh, seeing an entire downtown uh, wiped out. Uh, knowing the loss of life that occurred here in Muhlenberg County and everywhere else, this is this is the hardest tornado event we've ever been through. And it's not just because of the property damage, but we lost a lot of good people. And we got to do our best as it gets dark and through the next days to make sure we don't lose any more. You said that there's likely up to 100 victims to this storm. How many of those victims do you anticipate here in Warren County? Well, I believe that you're going to end up with double digit uh, fatalities here in Warren County. I know they're going through the process of confirming. They want to notify those families before uh, they put a specific number on it. And that's the right thing to do for those families. But you know, this is a county that was hit hard enough where certainly uh, I believe there's going to be more than 10 individuals lost and we'll see where that number goes. Part of it is, is the destruction everywhere is of such a nature that we won't have that total loss 
until we can get to, to each home. And we call it door to door, but in many of these homes, there's there's no door anymore. Governor, I understand you decided that state parks are going to be used. Well, we are we are activating our state parks right now. It's something we were able to do when we had historic flooding in Nicholas County uh, for a period of time. So we're we're working with the commissioner uh, right now on freeing up uh, those rooms. Uh, we want to be. Uh, of help. This is an all hands on deck, all parts of, of state government uh, on deck. And, and I, again, I appreciate the working relationship we've had today with both the area legislators, the, the judge, the, the mayor, uh, police, sheriff's office, firefighters, um, our federal partners that are here today. I mean, you just look around this room uh, and you see folks that typically have discrete missions all working together seamlessly and all praying that uh, most people are safe. Governor, the WKU news, obviously they redacted the statement that it was an actual student that was relative close to them. Just hearing that from a university like that on a day where it was supposed to be commencement, can you speak about that? Well, I know that we've lost lots of people. I, I believe we lost a three-year-old in, uh, in Graves County. Um, we're going to have lost people of, of all ages. We're going to lose entire families. Um, it's going to be hard. I mean, these are, I think it'll reach a hundred, you know, children of God irreplaceable um, in their communities to their families. Uh, this is, this is yet another uh, tough day and a tough two years that we're going to carry with us for a long time. And you know, right now I know we're in that phase where we got to put our head down and push through it. We got to find and help as many people as possible. But I would ask that everybody, when you can take some time to process, Talk to somebody that if you need it, this is a traumatic event that is um, not going to be easy for any of us uh, to simply just move through with um, what people are going to see or have seen at these sites. So uh, I want everybody to take care of themselves so that um, you know we will have uh, trauma that we carry forward, but we have great people out there and great programs able to help us too. Hey, Governor, you talked about the need for blood donations. Can you expand on that a little bit, how people can learn more about doing that? Is the Red Cross the best one contact for that? So we needed more blood donations before this occurred. Uh, we needed them throughout uh, COVID. Um, I'm guessing you all might be able to give us the best locations in Warren County. Uh, the people might be will ready, willing, and able. Certainly the uh, uh, Red Cross is, is one area that could always give blood and they're they're actually trying to get more blood as we speak there's an also an um, one that I wasn't familiar with that it actually uh, collects and provides all the blood for Greenview Hospital and that is uh, bloodassurance.org and they're going to be uh, available uh, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. tomorrow, at, I think at Greenview. We'll post this online exactly where, where they will be. But they're, they're, they're gathering and, and taking blood for Greenview Hospital. That's, they provide all the blood to them. And, of course, Red Cro the Red Cross is always there for you. And they've been short on blood for uh, some time. And they're... And, want to encourage you all to take 30 minutes and go give blood. It's not all that hard. And um, also, one other thing I wanted to reiterate that the governor said, don't drive up and down every street where you know there's damage yeah. because it has stagnated right. our, our traffic. And it took me 40 minutes to get yeah. here, which it should have taken seven because everybody had to look and take pictures of all the damage while they were yeah. while they were holding up everyone who had to be somewhere and especially tonight the first real cold night we're going to have after this please stay off the roads uh, again let our police and our firefighters ems be out there doing their job if you are out tonight on the roads you are probably just in the way uh, we really need to to stay home tonight if you have uh, heat and you are safe the, the more you stay on the road and keep traffic bogged up in the areas where there's damage, the slower it's going to be for BGMU and Warren Rural Electric to get your electricity back on. So you're actually being pretty selfish 
by going out there and spending all that time. Go Please. ahead. I just wanted to update uh, the chapter that you would give to the people here in Bowling Green, if you go to redcross.org, is South Central Kentucky chapter. So that is the destination if you want to donate locally. And of course, the governor gave us one that we can give all for Team Kentucky, um, but we are there and we are, our hearts and prayers are for everybody in our community. So thank you for your support. Thank you all. Those reporters are on the line. Oh, okay. We also have a couple people that um, uh, are on the line. Do we have Michael Dylan Payne? Where's Michael? We have him virtually, and we should. Hey, be Governor. Him yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Um, Go my right question ahead. is: Is do you have any idea yet of? Do you have any idea yet of the scope of the damage uh, that was done in Bowling Green? I know that. It was mentioned there were 500 houses and 100 businesses, but do we have any idea of like a, a monetary value of that yet? Open the damage to monetary value. Well, we have absolutely no idea about the monetary value at this point, but if you can do the math, uh, if there are 500 homes uh, times 250,000 plus uh, and 100 businesses at Half a million. So we actually, we had some industrial buildings right. as well. So it could easily be um, the biggest. Well, it will be the biggest loss we've ever seen in this county. Uh, and one of the very first things the president brought up in, in um, our first call is that FEMA now has better programs uh, to help people who have lost their home uh, build back than ever before. So there's going to be more federal money available there for that next step. And we are grateful for that. Uh, uh, Bria Jones. Okay, Karen Zarr. Hi, Governor. Do we have a report on the number of Mississippians? Is there a way to know yet? And is there a central number or site where people who are looking for someone should contact to get a name on the list? Thank you. Uh, so we currently uh, do not have an, an overall number um, of people that we have lost. Again, we want to confirm, notify families, um, and that list will come together. But we, we I, I now firmly believe it's, it's going to be well over 70. It is very likely going to be over 100 people lost here in Kentucky. Uh, work with your local emergency management uh, and law enforcement. Um, those out uh, doing the work, the National Guard, when they're going door to door um, in your community for those that you are uh, concerned about. Right now, there is not an, an online central repository given that uh, this event really hit uh, last night. That may be something we consider more on a, a statewide basis, but right now our folks are out there getting through the rubble, uh, trying to find uh, anybody who's still out there in need. Go ahead. Here locally, we do have a phone number that are manned right. by the personnel in this room, and that's 270-393-4116. So to report a gas leak, some other type of uh, issue like that, or to report that you have a missing person or can't locate one of your family members, call that number. We'll get that down, and we will start having the law enforcement take a look at that and trying to locate them. That's wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. And Karen, that's going on in, in each community. One of the Hardest parts in Dawson Springs was seeing the list in a small town of the number of people who are unaccounted for. All right, we've been hit pretty hard. Today has been a really painful day, I know, for all of us. I want to thank everybody who's out there, who's going to continue to be out there. Everybody stay off the roads. Call the people that you love. Uh, tell them that you love them. Pray for those that are grieving tonight. Commit to helping them out, not just today and tomorrow, but to ultimately uh, rebuild. Uh, we will get through this and we'll get through it together. That's what we do as Kentuckians. Thank you all very much.